This video will introduce the concept of covalent radius and show a demo Python program for computing bond links in molecules. Okay, so we have this covalent radius. What is this? This is effectively what we call the atomic radius for covalent bonding. So if we imagine we have a molecule here, like maybe this ethane molecule, we have this chemical intuition that there should be a bond or a single bond between these car this carbon and these hydrogens, between this carbon and these hydrogens, and between each of the two carbons. And we also have this intuition that these hydrogens are not bonded to one another. So the reason that is, is because effectively we imagine that these hydrogens and these carbons have this kind of radius to them, that if, you don't, if you're not within a certain sphere of this atom, then you're not going to be bonded to that atom. So that kind of intuition is encapsulated in this type of mathematical formula, where we have if the bond length between atom I and atom J is less than some threshold factor, which is usually going to be set to about 1.2, so within about 20% more than uh, this value in parentheses. So if our bond length is less than this threshold factor times the sum of their covalent radii, then we say that atoms I and J are bonded to one another. So these covalent radii we would typically measure in angstroms, 10 to the minus 10 meters. That's a convenient unit for the length scale of atomic bonds. Where for hydrogen, that's about you know 0.4 angstroms. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. And this will get us to our typical kind of uh, chemical intuition where these bonds are about 1.0 angstroms. These are about 1.5 angstroms. But most chemical bonds that we think about typically are between you know, 0 0.5 and 2.0 angstroms. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, when we write a program, so there are n atoms, and in, in principle we have to check every single pair of atoms to see if they're within this threshold. So if we compute that, that's going to be what we call n choose 2, and that value in combinatorics would be n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So that's how many pairs of atoms there are if we have n atoms, n times n minus 1 over 2. So that's n squared over 2 minus n over 2. So the leading term there is quadratic. The leading term is n squared. So this is what in uh, computer science we would call o n, big O n squared, meaning that this number grows as n squared. And we also know that there's, there should be a linear number of bonds in any given molecule. So if I have a carbon, the maximum number of bonds this carbon can typically have is four. Typically my hydrogens can have one bond each. And for almost every atom you can think of, there's a limit to how many bonds that atom can have. So that means that we have an upper bound for how many bonds we're actually going to find in a molecule for, as n as it's going to scale linearly with the number of atoms. Whereas the number of comparisons we have to do is quadratic, at least in, in the naive algorithm. If we want to get really fancy, we can get things that are faster than this. But in the naive sense, we have to compare all kinds of pairs of these. So these are um, this is just introducing you to the type of notation, which is going to show up later a lot in the computational chemistry playlist. So thinking about things in terms of how fast they're growing relative to the size of our system. Okay, so if we do that, we can build what I'm going to call a bond graph here. Um, in the previous versions, I called this a bond tree, but um, technically in the, in the uh, uh, mathematical sense, these aren't trees because uh, molecules can actually have rings in them. So I'm going to move to the more correct term, bond graph. So that would just be a list for all of our atoms of what other atoms they are bonded to. So for carbon 1 here, it's bonded to atoms 2, 3, 4, and 5. Carbon 2 is bonded to atoms 1, 6, 7, and 8. And then atoms 3, 4, and 5 are bonded to carbon 1. Atoms 6, 7, and 8 are bonded to carbon 2. So uh, I have a little Python script written up, which is basically if we give the XYZ coordinates for a molecule, 
and we know what their covalent radii of their atoms are. So it's going to read in an XYZ file, and it's going to output this kind of bond graph for any given uh, molecule that we choose. So if you want to follow along with this, uh, you can go to my GitHub account, github.com slash tmpchem. Go to the computational chemistry repository, which is where I'm going to keep all the programs and scripts and stuff that I use in this uh, in this course. And then the and then if you can clone that or download that according to GitHub's uh, in uh, their directions there. And then if you do that, what you'll get is this type of thing that you can open in your Jupyter notebook if you've downloaded and installed that move the Jupyter uh, down to the root of your directory there. And then inside here, I've created a directory I call notebooks, which we can say, you know, uh, you can create a new directory, go down there. So I say notebooks. Inside this notebooks directory, I've got, if this will do me the favor of loading, this notebook called geometry analysis. So I created that by saying new notebook, and yours should probably just say Python 3 here. So I say new notebook, <clears throat> and then inside this notebook that comes up here. So this is inside that geometry analysis notebook. And the program I'm going to be running is from this scripts directory, geometry analysis. All the scripts from this chapter are down in this directory. And the one I'm going to be looking at is specifically is this bonds.py, which is about 150 lines of Python down there. So again, if, you, if you're if you unfamiliar with this or have no computer science background, um, I'd highly encourage you to do some type of basic uh, tutorial on Python. Python is a great first language to get started with these kinds of things. Okay, so there's this bonds.py opened up inside of my uh, structure here inside of my Jupyter notebook. I can scroll through there. So I got some uh, some dictionary there with all my covalent radii. I got some functions to help me read in the XYZ file. Um, <clears throat> dealing with inputs, some functions to print things out, uh, some functions to uh, compute bond length, build the bond graph. Uh, figure out the bonds, and then uh, the main block at the end, which uh, puts that all together. Okay, so inside my geometry analysis notebook, which I have running in this directory here, I'm going to run this. So I'm going to say run dot dot slash to go up one directory. I'll hit tab, all the directory choices. I'm going to hit scripts, enter, tab, geometry analysis, enter, tab, bonds.py. And any of these scripts, typically, if you run them without any input arguments, if I hit shift enter, it's going to run this and it's going to give me the usage of this. So I say geometry analysis.py. That's incorrect. I should change that to say bonds.py. Whoops. Okay, bonds.py, but XYZ file. So I need to give it an XYZ file with the uh, target molecule. So I'm going to say space dot dot slash. I'm going to go to this geom directory where I keep a bunch of structures, tab XYZ, <clears throat> and then tab. <clears throat> inside this directory, I have a bunch of molecules inside there. So what if we want to do this for ethane? So I have an ethane file inside there, enter, and then shift enter to run this. Okay, so <clears throat> it computed it. Uh, printed out the initial geometry. This was the initial XYZ file that it read in. It determined from the bond graph which atoms are bonded to which, just as we had in our original uh, molecule, as I noted there. I have the XYZ file indicated in just the same type of way. So it built our bond graph, and it found these seven bonds, and it indicated what all the bond links are inside of this type of XYZ file. So you can play around with that. You can run that for any type of uh, molecule in that directory that you like. You can make your own, um, whatever you want to do. It is there for your exploration and uh, learning if you wish.